Another thing that blows my mind, it was me who rang the police. It was me who rang the British Embassy. It was me who rang the British Consulate. It was me who had the posters made. It was me who made the report. It was me out looking for him to, for days on end with no sleep and food. It was me who found the house he was at before the police even decided to start investigating. It was me who actually made it so public by posting on TikTok. It was me asking anyone I walked past if they had seen him. It was me who asked every cafe and bar in the Masker area. And it was me who had to tell his poor old mum. It was me bawling my eyes out with so many questions as to where he was and what happened. And yet it's still me that's getting all this hate. When all I can think about is where my best friend is and how we were having the holiday of a lifetime. And now he's not coming home. And then I say, do you have a call list of that day? So I can see that you've called the police, the British Embassy and the consulate. And I said, obviously, block out any other numbers that aren't involved, but just show me the calls you made to the authorities. And she said, I don't anymore. I've had so many spam callers. It's long gone. I deleted it. And I'm like, you deleted the one thing that could prove you were telling the truth. And she's like, I didn't realise I would need it. Poor me, poor me, poor me. Whoa, fucking me. Oh, dearie me. <laughs> So that was Comet Crime, Comet Crime over on Tick to the Talk. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. Um, but yeah, that was following on from an interview that she had done with um, Her Royal Highness um, Lucy May Law. <laughs> and yeah, so as you could hear from that, that was all about Lucy really rebuffering some of the flack that she had gotten. And and I think the important thing to kind of come to terms with here is that she's thick as shit. And that is that she can't understand what people feel are the things that she did wrong. If it's true, right, and what, and that's a big if, but just say you want to believe the narrative then, that at some point Jay ended up at this Airbnb, and stick a pin in that because we're going to come back to that. But if he did, and he went on this walk, and there was this hike, like a lot of people are commenting, just saying, look, this is this is just a tragic case of some lad gets gets razzed off, his, his nut goes out for a stroll in the mountains and shit carts it off a, off a cliff down a fucking 500 foot ravine if you want to even believe that then what you've got to because you can't have your cake and eat it you've got to succumb to the fact that both brad and lucy and there was questions in that like i say i'm not giving you the whole conversation that was had between comet crime and lucy because she actually had challenged and raised the question about brad as well bearing in mind that brad was supposed to be jay's best friend but that's by the by. But with respect of Lucy, it, it, again, if you want to believe that narrative, then both Lucy and Brad had both spoken to Jay while he was on the walk and was given the the key piece of information, and that was exactly where he was. So he wasn't lost. He was he was literally saying this is where I am. And you have to ask the question if you're a critical thinker as to if Jay didn't want Lucy to come find him or help, then why would he have even given him her whereabouts? And it would seem that after be, after Jay gave her the very information that would lead to him being found, she went off on this wild goose chase doing other stuff, contacting every single other person that had no real relevance to the situation at that point because Jay wasn't missing. You can't report him missing when he's not. You've been given the information of exactly where he is. People are pissed off because they can't understand why when you're on the phone to someone who is apparently doing something that is totally and utterly fucking ridiculous if that's, if that's what he was doing, but you were given the information. You knew where he was. Why couldn't you have just gone to got gone to that place, gone there yourself, got together with Brad, Brandon even, got together with the people who were supposed to be with him and and being his friends, and 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 go into where he was? It, it just it, it doesn't make sense, and that's why so many people have got issues and taken stock. You're saying that you contacted the police. Why would you contact the police? 
what good are the police going to do? Because you want them to do something that you're not willing to do yourself, and that is jump in a car, jump in a taxi, and go and get Jay? The the British consulate and all these people, what the fucking hell use are they going to do? All that is going to happen is time. Why couldn't you have literally just said, stay where you are? And I've questioned this time and time again. And that question is a valid one. Because when you bear in mind that you was given that information, you did nothing with it, but then you went and done a load of other things. And one of those things, perhaps, as... <laughs> As stated by Comet Crime, you had turned around and said you didn't have the proof that would prove that you did one of those things, the, the call records to the consulate, to the British Embassy, but yet you've got loads of calls that absolutely had no relevance. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make sense and it doesn't ring true. And it just, again, proves, or, or in my in my opinion, proves my point earlier, and that is that what seemingly happened was a load of things were done that gave the perception of doing loads when in reality they did nothing. They did nothing. It was almost like if I didn't want to find somebody and I wanted to wash my hands of the situation, that is almost what I would do. My mindset would be, well, I'm not going to go and help him. Fuck him. I'm just going to try and get as many other people as I can to do it. That, again, is... Again, you can't have your cake and eat it. You know, Lucy Law and Brad both were in a, a, a position where they could have saved Jay's life if, indeed, you want to go with that narrative. And that is that Jay went to the B&B, he left the B&B, he was off the lift, turned the lift down, went to get scran or and cigarettes, who knows, and he embarked on an 11-hour hike through the mountains again if that's if that's the card that you want to play and that is what you feel is the is the true story of it all then why didn't either brad or lucy save jay's life when they had the chance to do so and why instead did they embark or lucy embark on this wild goose chase of doing things that would have no relevance to the actual act of saving Jay's life, of helping him. It's all right to be doing things that give the perception of doing loads, but what one of those single acts actually had a bearing on what happened to Jay. And none of those things had a positive action against that. They were all about yes look i've done loads and this is what i said at the beginning this was this was almost set up from the very start lucy came out swinging this was all about pointing the finger blaming jay jay's in the state jay's doing this jay shouldn't have been doing that jay was off on his own he didn't want to come back he was doing this he was do and it was all about pointing the finger while simultaneously trying to make out that she's just this real fantastic friend that done absolutely everything she could in the power when the reality is she didn't do the one thing she absolutely had the power to do and that's just my opinion let me know down below and i'll catch you all tomorrow